It was almost exactly 50 years ago tonight the FDA said yes to a new medication that changed women's lives in this country and relationships and overall society forever. It became known simply as the pill, and while it was revolutionary, it took a while for the world's first oral contraceptive to fully be available to all the American women who wanted it. Tonight, in the first of two reports, our chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman, looks back at the birth of the birth control pill. These are birth control pills coming off a production line. Rarely in history has something so small been credited with and vilified for so much. The birth control pill has been opposed from the minute it hit the market. So it is, in fact, a very long struggle to get to today. Decades of struggle in the laboratory by a team of dedicated researchers, including Dr. John Rock, a Catholic fertility specialist. The woman now can imitate nature. But FDA approval of the oral contraceptive 50 years ago this month was only the first step on a long and arduous journey to access and acceptance, and meshed as it was in the turmoil of the 1960s. Faye Waddleton is the former head of Planned Parenthood. Many sectors of society were saying, I want to be liberated, I want to be treated as a human being, I want to re realize the American dream. And along came the technology that liberated us from the traditional role of being barefoot and pregnant. But it took until 1972 and a Supreme Court ruling to ensure legal access to the pill for single women. Access that was fought in part by state governments and the Catholic Church, whose culture was shifting as well. When Pope Paul VI banned the pill for Catholics in 1968, the debate for many was already over. Catholics didn't follow the rules anymore. They just thought, you know what? We need the pill, we're gonna take the pill, we're not gonna listen to Rome anymore. Popular culture embraced this shift as well. Television had its first sitcom, That Girl, about a single woman and her adventures in the big city. In the office, our relationship will be purely business. Love American style. Other shows like Love American style were more direct. What, what kind of pill? The pill. The pill. Oh, that is disgusting. Christy Hefner had something of a ringside seat at the sexual revolution, thanks in part to her father's playboy empire. I guess I'm unusual in my generation in that when I went to get a birth control pill, I went with my mother. Do you remember the conversation you had with your mom? Only in the sense that it was so non-traumatic. But five decades later, the pill remains a deeply uncomfortable subject for many. The double standard is alive and well, my dear. It did not, it was not eradicated by the oral contraceptive. We always have this tension between the way people actually live their lives and, you know, where our societal attitudes and our laws are. In the debate over birth control, science moves somewhat faster than society. But without those changing attitudes, the pill would have been, well, just another pill. Dr. Nancy Snyderman, NBC News, Chicago. Hard for a lot of people to believe the birth control pill has been around now for half a century. It became a game changer for millions of American women and for American society. Tonight, part two of our look at the pill at 50, including the question, is the next step a pill for men? The story from our chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman. Fifty years ago, a revolution, a sexual revolution, took place in homes and bedrooms across America with the introduction of the first birth control pill. But even if you took it or knew someone who did, chances are you just didn't talk about it. I think this was seen as a really a radical notion. It completely transformed women's lives. Their ability to go back to school, to finish college. Today, an estimated 12 million American women use the pill, and about 80% will use it at some point in their reproductive lives. At the end of 12 weeks... But just because it's readily available doesn't mean it's always easy to get. I think there's a lot of taboo still around birth control. Um, even in the last 10 years, there have been a lot of um, campaigns to make sure that pharmacists will actually dispense birth control to any woman who wants it and who has a prescription. 
And that has inspired drug companies to fast-track efforts to make birth control as accessible to women as it is convenient to use. The pill was a great discovery, but we have new methods of delivering um, contraceptives so that they can stay in the body for a longer period of time as well as be safe. Including this ring, which emits a steady dose of medicine to prevent pregnancy for up to one full year, being studied by New York City's Population Council. Contraceptive sprays and gels that can be applied to an arm or abdomen are also on the horizon for women. We did some acceptability studies and the women loved it. For the past 50 years, the responsibility of taking a daily birth control pill has fallen squarely on the shoulders of women. But that may soon be changing. In 2009, Chinese researchers reported successful trials of what may become the world's first male birth control shot. Population Council researchers are working on a male contraceptive implant. And at Los Angeles Biomedical Institute, doctors Christina Wang and Ronald Swerdloff have been hard at work on a study on a new male contraceptive gel. But these ideas, while promising, may take some getting used to. I think if there is a male pill, we'll have to work, wage the same kind of campaign to mainstream it and making, make it accessible, affordable, and frankly, socially acceptable. Acceptable to a new generation, 50 years after one little pill changed everything. Dr. Nancy Snyderman, NBC News, New York.